What's up guys, we got the EcoFlow Delta II portable power station. It's one of the most popular power stations out right now, or at least for EcoFlow. I've had this one for about a year now. And so I wanna just go over this power station, all the features that it has so you guys can see it. If you're thinking about getting one, I'll run some tests for you guys. I'll show what this thing can actually power. And then I'll give you guys my review at the end. So let's get in the video. So first off, I just wanted to go around the power station itself and go over all the features this thing has so you guys can see it. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery or a LFP battery, which is really nice because it's going to last a long time. LFP batteries are some of the most efficient and well-made batteries out there. And this one in particular, EcoFlow claims it's going to have 3000 plus battery life cycles. So if you were to use this battery every single day, it would be able to last over longer than a decade. And that's just to degrade it down to 80% of capacity. And so it would actually be able to last a lot longer than that. So that is the battery chemistry, LFP, which is really nice. It's a 1,024 watt battery capacity. And so this is going to be a really good battery to have. It's big enough to power essentially all the basic items in your house, which is why I think this is so popular. Now, as far as the actual design goes, it is sort of a rectangular design. As you can see right here, you have your handles on the side. On the longer sides over here, you don't really have any controls or anything like that. But then on the sides, you have your different inputs. And on the other side, you have your extender port. On this side right here, you have your main panel with your screen. If you wanna turn on the screen, you just hold down the power button and it'll turn on. On the screen, you can see the battery level percentage. You can see right now it's at 100%. You can see how long it'll last. So right now it's 99 hours because nothing's being plugged into it. And then you also have your input and output if you were to charge this thing up or plug something into it to power it. Below the screen, you have your USB-A ports and USB-C ports. It's got two 100 watt USB-C, which is really nice for charging devices a lot faster because it has a 100 watt output. And then on the USB-A's, you have two fast charging ports and two non-fast charging ports. The fast charging ports are going to have 18 watts of output, where the other USB-A's are only going to have 12 watts of output. And this is really nice because you can power, you know, six different devices at once with all of these different ports on the front side. When you do want to use any of these USB-A's or USB-C's, what you have to do is you have to click this button right here. Once the light turns on, that means that it's active and you can start plugging your devices in right here. Now, if we turn the battery over to the side, as you can see on this side, you don't really have anything. All you have is your fans to help keep it cool. And then if you go to the other side over here, you have all of your AC inputs and your charging ports as well. As you can see right here, you got six AC outlets. Two of them are three prong and four of them are two prong. And you're going to have a max AC output of 1800 watts. And it's going to be able to surge up to 2700 watts so you're going to be able to power a lot of different things with this power station which is super nice you know having six different ac outlets and having a max output of 1800 watts i mean that's going to be able to power your refrigerator tv and stuff like that for a long time which i'll actually go over here we'll do a test in a little bit and then down here you also have a 12 volt dc port as well a car charger port so if you have a device that needs to be powered by a dc charger you can plug it in right here and then you also have this right here to input which i'm not really sure i've never used those before but there's different devices that use that to power as well and if you want to turn on the dc power you just click this button right here once the light's on it's active if you want to use the ac power you just click this button right here and then it's active to plug it in right here and then to charge up this power station as well you have this flap right here which you can lift up and there's actually three different ways you can charge this power station up you can either charge it with your car you can charge it with an outlet or you can charge it with solar. So right here is the port where you can plug in a solar panel and you can also plug in the car charger. And then right here is where you can plug in the outlet charger as well. And then right here as well, you have your overload protection. As far as what this power station comes with, you are going to get your outlet cable right here and you are going to get your car charger cable right here. It does not come with a solar charger unless, you're a, unless you get the bundle with the solar panels. But as you can see, you got your, your car charger input right here. And then you have your input right here to plug it directly into the power station so that way you can charge it up. Now, one thing that's really cool about EcoFlow is they have something called extreme fast charging. And so if you actually charge it with an outlet, you can actually get the max input up to 1200 watts and you can actually charge this thing up in about an hour, 10 hour, 15 minutes. So you're gonna be able to charge this thing up super fast if you charge it with the outlet. As far as the solar input goes, you're gonna have a max solar input of 500 watts. And so you could plug in solar panels up to 500 watts of input to be able to charge this fast. And if you're using that max solar input, you're gonna be able to charge this thing up in about two to three hours with the solar as well. And then as far as the car charger goes, you have the 12 volt input. And so it's going to take a lot longer with the car. It'll be about nine to 10 hours or more plugging this into the car and charging it by that. So I wouldn't recommend charging with your car, but for a last resort, if you need to charge this, 
you know, you can charge it with your car as well, which is really nice. And then now just rotating this to the other side, you have your other side right here and you actually have an input right here to actually extend this battery. So one thing that's really cool about EcoFlow about the Delta series, like the Delta two, is you could actually get a Delta two extra battery and you could actually plug it in right here to actually double the capacity. And so instead of, you know, 1,048 watts, you can get up to 2,048 watts of battery capacity with the extender right here, which is nice. And then going here to the top side, you have here, so it's super easy to carry around. And then you have a flat surface on the top where you can set the extra battery if you want, or you can just put other devices that you're charging, like your phone, laptop, things like that. You can set it up here, so that way it has a place to sit while it's charging. Now, as far as how much this thing weighs, I'm gonna show you guys right now so you guys can see it, but it is pretty easy to carry around with the handles. But I'll show you guys right now, I have it set up. And as you guys can see right here, it weighs about 26 pounds, almost 27 pounds. And it's nice because it's got a big battery capacity to where you can power most of the items in your house, but it's also portable enough to where you can take it with you on the go. You can put it in your car, you can take it camping, and there's a lot of different things that you can use with this because it's so portable. And then for the dimensions go, I'll show you guys right here in live time so you guys can see. I'll do it from the top. It's about eight inches deep. It's about 11 and a half inches tall. And then it's about 15 and a half inches long. So it's not crazy big or anything like that. You can fit this in your trunk, no problem. If you wanted to take this camping with you and it's light enough to where you can take it with you on the go or you can just have in your house and you can store it pretty easily for when you want to use it in case of a power outage and things like that. All right, so now that you guys can see some of the specs and details of the power station itself, now we're gonna put it to the test. We're gonna see what can this thing actually power. We're gonna do a refrigerator and we're gonna do some other tests. So let's get into it. All right, so for the first test, I just wanted to show you guys that you can power a bunch of different things at once with this. You know, whether you're camping, you wanna power a lot of your camping devices, you can totally do that. Right now, I'm actually charging this tablet right here. As you can see, it's charging. I'm charging a phone right here. It's charging, I'm charging these headphones right here and then I also have this light actually plugged in right here as well and the tablet is actually being plugged in to the AC output right there and as you can see on the screen it's showing about 31 watts being outputted so not that much and with that 31 watts this thing is going to be able to run for about 22 hours while running or charging all those devices at once so you can definitely charge you know a lot of items at once whether it's multiple laptops your phones this is going to be a great power station to have to take with you on the go as well you know power a lot of your different camping devices at once or just in your house when you have an emergency and you need to plug you know multiple phones in here tablets things like that laptops you're going to be able to do that with the delta 2 and for 22 hours which is a long time so that was a super simple test but i just wanted you guys to see it just so you guys could see you know how this can power actually a lot of devices at once and they can actually power way more as well there's a bunch more slots and outlets on the back if you really wanted to charge you know everything at once all right so for the next test i wanted to show you guys a tv this is a 65 inch tv i figured you know before i got a power station like this i wanted to know you know how long it could power a tv as well and so this is going to be a good test right here as you can see i have the tv plugged in and i have the ac power turned on and right now it's not using any power because the tv is not on so let me turn it on we have the remote right here and let's see the light is turning on that's a good sign it's turning on now let's look at the power station looks like it's pulling about 121 watts still is turning on 120 watts and now it just jumped down to like 67 watts and as you can see the tv is on and this thing is running it no problem at all and let's see how long you can actually run that as you can see right now it's about 11 hours so so yeah, you could run a 65 inch TV for about 11 hours. If you had a smaller TV, it'd probably be longer than that. If you had a bigger one, it'll be a little bit shorter than that. But TVs don't use that much power. But yeah, if you guys wanted to run a TV or a projector while you're camping, things like that, you could run it for about 11 hours, which is pretty impressive for a power station this small and compact. All right, now for this next test, this is a question that a lot of people ask about the Delta II. How long can this actually power a refrigerator? So we're going to test this out. This is a two-door refrigerator, standard fridge. I have the outlet right here. So I'm going to plug it into the back right here, into the three-prong outlet. And we're going to see, it does take a second to kick in usually with the refrigerator. It looks like we're at 157 watts. It turned off again. It does take a second to boost up. So let's see what happens. 
It's taking a second here. All right, it looks like the refrigerator just turned on, and as you can see, it went up to about 1,700 watts. And because this has a max output of 1,800 watts, it was able to kick it on, and now it's using a steady 98 watts. So it does take a bit for you know a power station to kick on the compressor, and as you can see, I mean, it used about 1,700 watts. This has a max output of 1,800 watts. It has a surge of 2,700 watts, so it could have definitely taken a lot more than that, but it was able to power it no problem, and it looks like it's still at a steady 97 watts. And right now at that 97 watt range, it's going to be able to power the refrigerator about seven to eight hours. Sometimes this isn't as accurate as well. Like I think it actually could run longer than that, probably around 10 hours or so. Um, but right now it says seven hours. So like on the safe side, seven hours, but this can definitely power a refrigerator. Just so you guys can see it's working. We'll go on the inside right here. As you guys can see, the light is on and the refrigerator is working and everything. So this definitely can power a refrigerator. In case of an emergency or a power outage, you know, this is going to be a great option to have to be able to keep your food from going bad and stuff like that because it'll make the refrigerator work. All right, now we're going to test this thing a little bit more. Now we got a panini maker, which uses a lot more power or continuous output. And we're going to test that after this. We're going to push it to the limits. We're going to see the surge and how it works when you use more power than 1800 watts and stuff like that. So let's get into it. I'm going to plug this thing in to the back right here and boom, it's plugged in. And as you can see, it is turned on. Let's see what the output is. 1160 watts, okay. All right, so it's using quite a bit of output. Usually things with heat use a lot more power. And as you can see, it is running it no problem. It's under that 1800 watts of max output, so it's good to go. And because this battery capacity is, you know, 1024 watts, and this is using more than that, it's going to be able to run this for less than an hour, so about 47 minutes or so. So definitely enough to make your sandwich, or whatever you're doing on here, but if you want to use this for longer than an hour, you know, you're gonna need to charge this up. One thing I forgot to mention about the Delta II actually is that it does have pass-through power, and so you can actually be charging this up as you're using it. So you could plug in a solar panel outside, and you would be able to run this a little bit longer if you were charging it while you're using it as well. But as you can see, no problem here running the panini maker. All right, now we've got an actual test here. We're gonna really test the surge and max capacity of this power system right here. So we got the, we got a toaster now as well. I'm gonna put the bread in here just so it actually works. And we're gonna plug in the toaster right here like this. Let me put it behind this. Plug in the toaster right here, boom. And then I'm gonna plug in the panini maker as well. So. Right now the toaster isn't on because I haven't put it down yet, but as you can see, the panini maker is plugged in. It's using that 1161 watts again. And now we're going to test this out and see what happens. So push this down, see what happens. All right, 1797 watts. So it's, it's actually keeping it under 1800 watts, which is pretty cool, 1790. I'm actually going to um, unplug the panini maker just to see how many watts the toaster actually uses by itself. But that's one cool thing about this power station, guys, you guys can see right here, is what this actually does is it lowers the voltage. And basically it's gonna make each item a little bit less powerful, but it's going to be able to keep it under that 1800 watt range still by doing that. So that way you can still power these two devices. Whereas normally if you plug in both these, it's gonna be higher than 1800 watts if it was at full capacity. But what this power station does is it actually lowers basically the power output of each one and allows it to still be able to work. It might not work as good, but it's still going to work and keeping it under that 1800 watt range. And if we were running both these at the same time, as you can see, it's going to be able to last about 28 minutes. So now I'm just going to unplug the panini maker and let's see um, what happens when just the toaster's in there. So it looks like the toaster uses about 741 watts. So yeah, as you can see right there, I mean, 740 watts plus like the 1100 watts, it should be over the 1800 watt range, but it's able to maintain it and keep it lower than that. So, so now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put another piece of bread on the other side and I'll actually test what it does when we have even more power into this and see if it can handle it or not. All right, so here we go. I have the panini maker plugged in. Now I have one side of the toaster. It's at that right under 1800 watts. Now let's see what happens when I pull down the other one right here. Okay, 2,000, so it went up to 2,000. Now it's at 1,834 watts. Let's see how long it can last here. Normally the surge 
won't last that long. Um, and you know, this does have a surge of 2400 watts, so it'll be able to do the initial bit. But let's see what happens after like 30 seconds or so. All right, so it's actually been like a minute and a half and it's still running over 1800 watts. So this thing actually can, you know, go a little bit over 1800 watts, which is super cool. Um, it does have that surge up to 2400. If you did go over the 2400 watts, the overload protection would turn on and basically it would turn off the devices. But as you can see right now, it's super good at maintaining, um, you know, at that around 1800 watt range. Now, one thing to note though with this is that this toaster is going to take a lot longer to heat up and actually work and the panini maker than it would when it, if it was just plugged in by itself. Because it's over the 1800 watt range, it is lowering the power output. And so basically, yeah, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but it's still able to power it, which is super cool. You know, that's one really cool feature that, you know, as you can see right here, the Delta II is doing, you know, it's, it's able to power this, you know, no problem, which is, which is pretty awesome. It's able to balance that out. So really cool that I was able to handle that test. All right, then just after that test, I noticed something, so I wanted to mention it for you guys. Right now, it, it just turned off, but after, after I was done unplugging these, the fans were actually still on, and it was a little bit louder because it was basically trying to keep this thing cool um, because since it was using so much power, it was you know heating up a little bit more than normal. You know, and that's one thing that's nice about this to keep it from overheating is it has those fans, and they'll kick on you know, even after you unplug the device, this thing's overheating. Um, you know, it's going to kick on those fans to help keep it cool. All right. And then the last test I just wanted to show you guys is that this can actually power an e-bike as well, or it can actually help. It can actually charge an e-bike as well. So I have it plugged in right here to the e-bike and it's plugged into the power station. And right now, as you can see, it's using about 192 Watts. So if you guys were, you know, traveling or in an RV or anything like that, and you were, you know, using your e-bike or electric scooter stuff like that, you could actually use this to charge up your e-bikes and electric scooters, which is a super cool feature or super nice to have as well. And just a cool example that I wanted to show you guys as well that, you know, you can actually charge your e-bikes, which is pretty cool. All right. So now that we did the test and everything, I just wanted to give you guys my review. As far as my review goes, I think this is an awesome power station. I don't really have, you know, very much complaints. The only thing I would like about this power station is I wish that everything was just on the front or if it was just all on the side. I don't really like how there's like USB C's, USB A's on, the, on this side, and then the outlets are on the back. I wish that all of that was just on the front. That way it'd be a little bit easier with cables, things like that, to plug things in. Um, you know, if they were able to space them out evenly. Other than that, though, as far as the power goes, what well, this thing can power, I think this is an awesome power system to have. It's super portable. You know, it only weighs like 26 pounds, and it can power like all the items in your house. So I really like it. I think it's a great power system to have for power outages, things like that, but also to have you know, to take with you on the go for camping or just emergencies if you need it, you know, while you're driving or while you're on the go and things like that. So that's really the only complaint I had. Other than that, I think it's an awesome power station. And if you guys are looking for one for, for backup power for your house, but also with portability, I would definitely recommend checking the Delta II out. This is an awesome power station.